Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be walking you through our omni-channel text-based agents. So this is a segment of our AI agents ecosystem. So it's this segment here, which I'm going to be running you through in today's video. So essentially, the way this works is it all starts with connecting the CRM to our AI agents, which work via OpenAI and also um, using Make as well in order to connect Go High Level to OpenAI. So yeah, if you want all the free resources to, to this system, everything's down in the description below. So you can literally just follow um, follow that, that link and, and go ahead and download the Make Automation template. Um, and I also give you some information regarding how to actually build out the assistant within Go High Level. But I'll be covering um, some of that in today's video as well. So essentially the way it works um, is within Go High Level, this is kind of where everything starts, right? So um, these are the automations we're currently running for one of our clients, um, and let's let's dive right into one of them. So the first stage is the AI initiation initiation stage. So when a new lead comes from you know SMS or from the live chat widget on the website or from WhatsApp messages, they're lot, they're obviously going to send like a, an initial message. So they'll come through this automation. They'll, this automation will be triggered. Um, and from here, we take them down the necessary branch to perform you know, the relevant actions to actually respond to that message. So let me just walk you through them one by one. So on the left here, we've got the disabled AI um, branch, right? So what we do is um, if, if the client, if our client decides to disable AI for that specific lead, um, you know, perhaps it's a friend or family, or perhaps they see that the lead isn't really interested or, you know, for whatever reason, they might decide to disable the AI. So then what they can do is they can add the disabled AI tag. And then for any future messages, which come from that lead, um, it goes down this branch and we don't use the AI assistant to actually respond to those messages. Then now through Go High Level, we also set up a live chat widget, right? So the live chat widget is um, featured on the client's website in the bottom right corner. Um, and again, whenever a lead lands on the website, whenever there's you know traffic flowing to that website, people might have questions they immediately want answered, right? So they'll go to that widget, they'll ask a question, and they'll get a response um, very quickly. So what we do here is we send an, an internal notification to the client so they are aware that someone's engaging with the live chat. Um, we add a tag, so we add the live chat AI tag, which basically um, allows us to tag that specific lead um, and kind of note, you know, where they've come from. And then we trigger a webhook, right? So we trigger um, the AI assistant webhook. So this is a custom value which we set up within Go High Level, um, and this webhook is for our make automation, which I'll be walking you through later. Um, but essentially, that you know, this this webhook triggers that automation. Then for the SMS branch, pretty much the same as the WhatsApp branch. So what we do here is we're tagging the SM with the SMS AI tag. Here we're tagging with the WhatsApp AI tag. And then we remove from the AI follow-up workflow, which is a, another workflow which essentially controls the process of following up with leads. Um, and obviously, if the person's actually engaging with the AI and sending messages, we don't want to be following up. So we come down here and we remove them from that workflow to, to ensure you know, we don't actually follow up with them. Then this, these two stages here, we are creating a new opportunity in the sales pipeline. So we're able to actually track the sales process. Um, and these will just kind of mark the lead as a hot lead, which means they're obviously sending a message and that they're engaging um, with the AI. And then from here, we are updating the contact field. So we a lot of people, right, when they engage with the AI, they send you know three to five messages maybe in one go, but they're separate messages. A lot of AI agents out there can't handle that scenario, right? They'll send a response for each individual message, which is obviously you know it's not great because um, you know there's a lot of overlap with what people are saying, or you know people might kind of split sentences into different lines, um, so it's hard for the AI to interpret that, right? So what we do is we bulk all of those messages into one variable. Um, to one custom field and we then compute that through the AI. So if someone sends a bunch of you know messages, say three messages, they will all be bulked into one field you know labeled under message input and then we would compute message input in one um, in one go to generate one response for all of those messages. So that just comes across a bit you know a bit better um, when responding to leads um, and yeah just kind of means we're able to process and, and give better responses to questions um, 
and ultimately ensures you know better better user um, experience. And then finally, we add them to the AI webhook workflow, which essentially is a workflow where we are um, processing the make automation. So that's the, that's the kind of triggering this make automation here. Um, so let me let me kind of dive right into the second stage now. So the second stage, this is where we are processing the message, right? So what we're doing here is we're just waiting a minute just to um, allow the user to send as many messages as they want. So again, if, if they're sending three to five messages or or they send you know separate messages, then they can send those you know one after another, and that gives um, us time to you know gather those messages under the the variable, um, and then actually compute them under the webhook, right? So once we've gathered all those messages, we will process the webhook again. Um, so this is the same as, as kind of the live chat webhook that we that we do, um, and then we update the message input field. So we just clear that field. Um, just to ensure, you know, for the kind of next batch of, of messages or the next response that the, the lead gives us, then we're able to obviously compute that separately um, to, you know, what they what they previously entered. So that's the AI webhook. And then from there, um, we, so once we've, we, we obviously call the make automation, then what the make automation does is it will change this custom field, right? So the make automation will automatically change the AI assistant response custom field um, and that will trigger this automation to, to flow. Um, and yeah, so what we do here is we set an outbound message field as well, but this isn't hugely necessary. Um, in certain scenarios, we just use this to kind of compute the previous message that we've sent out to, to leads. Um, so that's, that's why we have that. But in this specific um, flow, we don't actually need that. But yeah, for certain clients, we do, do use that. Now what we do here is we've got several branches. So um, again, if, if we have the disabled AI tag, they'll come through here. So we don't you know, wanna send a response. Um, and if they in interact with the live chat, what we do is they come down here, we send the live chat message. So we just shoot that message across and we remove the live chat AI tag, just in case you know maybe they give us our, their contact details, for example, SMS or WhatsApp. Um, and then that specific contact will um, will start to communicate via WhatsApp, then we wanna be able to handle those scenarios. So we always remove the tag um, down here. Then for SMS, what we do is we actually wait for this kind of sending window. Um, this comes across a bit, you know, a bit more human, a bit better because we're not sending messages at crazy hours um, where, you know, where, where leads can get obviously a bit, a bit annoyed when, when people are kind of messaging at, at crazy hours. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of why we do that. But yeah, certain for certain clients, we can um, obviously turn off this feature and just respond straight away. It really depends on you know what your preferences are. Um, and then with WhatsApp, we also do the same kind of thing. So we're sending out the AI system response. Um, but then at the end here, so WhatsApp for this client is the main channel that we use. Hence why we have you know a bit extra going on here. But yeah, what we do here is if the client is not converted, so if they're not tagged as converted within within the system, um, we would obviously want to follow up with them. So we add them into the follow up flow from there. Now, just yeah, just as a little side note, what you can do is you can also add more branches for Instagram and Facebook. That's also what we do for for our other clients. Um, so yeah, it, you literally just add another couple branches in here just for Instagram and Facebook. You do the same for workflow number one. Um, as well, but that's how you can make it, you know, work across several different channels. Um, and then let's cover the follow-up sequence here. So for the fourth workflow, what we do here is we, because the leads are obviously automatically added to this to this sequence, um, there's no trigger. But what we do here is we, um, so within the make automation, we compute a fo an appropriate follow-up date. So when we're engaging with a lead via via message, you can obviously, you can sort of tell when a lead um, wants to be followed up with, right? So some people from, from a past experience, some people say that, you know, I'm on holiday, I wanna, can you follow up with me in a, in a week or so? So what we do within the make automation is we use um, a couple different LLM steps to actually compute when the best time is to follow up with those leads. And then we update that in go high level. Um, and then in the CRM, we went, once they're in this workflow, we then constantly go round this sort of loop. And every day or so we'll check if it's the right day to follow up with them. And then if it is, they'll come down here and they'll go through three um, kind of sequence follow ups. And obviously when they respond, they, they exit the follow up sequence, right? So these WhatsApp messages are just kind of um, set templates in order to follow up with leads. 
Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty much how everything works on the Go High Level side. Um, so yeah, let's let's let me show you exactly how it works in Make. So this is the Make automation. Obviously, we trigger trigger it via the webhook, and then the endpoints are involve updating that contact within Go High Level. So we're relaying all of that data across to to Go High Level. Um, but what happens here is we have several filters. So live chat AI, SMS AI, WhatsApp AI, and Instagram AI. So when those different tags are are kind of enabled, then they'll come you know down the relevant branch, right? Now, what happens here if we, let's just dive into the main one, which is the WhatsApp AI step. So what happens here is we've set up an, an, um, an assistant with an open AI. So I can actually show you that. So the assistant, we haven't set any system instructions because we used adva the advanced settings within Make. So we configure all of that within Make. Um, we do attach the knowledge base here just so, um, you know, we can obviously feed in a relevant knowledge about the business. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all that we do here on this side in terms of the configuration. On the make side, this is this is how it's set up, right? So we process the message input field, which is obviously passed over from Go High Level. We also have a, a thread ID um, custom field within Go High Level. So with this custom field, it's important to to add this in because we can remember parts of the previous conversation, right? So it essentially gives us, um, give our, gives our agent the ability to have memory um, of past conversation. And then what we do is we create out the instructions, right? So with the instructions, we generally assign a role, tasks, rules. Um, we can also assign specifics and, and kind of give it a context as well. So those are a couple additional steps that we add. Um, and then we also set a temperature and we keep the top P at one. So the reason we change the temperature is because it allows the agent to follow the kind of the instructions and the knowledge base a lot more closely, which is um, ideal for this kind of scenario. So usually we set it as 0 0.1, but with certain certain clients might want the agent to be very, like very, very specific in terms of the messages it's, they send out. So certain people will, um, we would have larger knowledge bases with a complete list of, of loads of FAQs. Um, and in those scenarios, we would change this to 0.01 or um, just something under 0.1. And you test with different temperatures to see um, what works best. But in terms of the role, um, we give a name to the agent and obviously give it a bit more context on what the business is about. Um, with the task, we obviously allocate a specific task. So for most businesses, the, the kind of role of this system is to pre-qualify leads and get them booked in for appointments or, or booked in for you know some sort of offer, right? So what we do is we would um, give the agent the task. So the task would be a, a bunch of pre-qualifying questions and also um, kind of how to, how to go ahead and present those questions. So um, sometimes the agent might, um, so if you don't tell the agent exactly how to you know, present those questions, then it, they might um, just ask all those questions in one go, right? So what we wanna do is just say, you know, go through those questions sequentially, ask one question at a time, um, you know, answer the lead questions and, and kind of build up rapport and build out the conversation. So a lot of that can be done just by um, prompting it correctly. And you see here we use Markdown format. So if you're not familiar with Markdown, I suggest looking into it um, because it's a good way to, to structure the instructions um, for, the, for the agent. Then from here, we obviously get the response from the agent. We pass this through um, a couple different regex steps. So this step here will isolate the kind of source. So when you're building out an agent within OpenAI's assistance API, um, that agent might kind of reference um, parts of the knowledge base, right? So the way that's usually structured is with these two kind of fancy, fancy bracket things. Um, and that's how it references the knowledge base. But we'll, we, we obviously want to get rid of that because the client on the front end doesn't want to, you know, we don't want to be showing them the, the you know, where the, the AI agent has extracted the information from. So what we do is we just remove that um, by using this regex step here. And then we also remove asterisks as, as well. So a lot of agents will, um, they'll add kind of asterisks and make bold text for, for no reason. So yeah, we'll remove that here just to, to be sure. We, we also kind of prompt it to, to not include the asterisks. Um, but uh, yeah, we also use the regex steps just to be you know ultra ultra careful, and then we have follow up steps. So um, so with this with this step, this is where we're, we're calculating the follow up status. So what we want to do here is we want to calculate um, we want to essentially create a summary of 
kind of the the intent of the lead and understand um, how, you know how busy they are with their schedule and then that will allow us to estimate you know an appropriate follow-up date so these are the couple element LLM steps that we use to, to estimate that so you can see we've added a system prompt and then we're processing the kind of user input here and then obviously the um, LLM will output a specific response and then we feed that response in here which is another step which computes the actual number of days to follow up, up you know after the current date um, so yeah what happens here is we kind of it, it will choose a specific number of days from from this list so it's either going to output you know to follow up after 30 days output either to follow up after uh, 14 days or after seven days or three days or, or one day um, and it, we've set a default option here to one day just in case you know it's not clear and then we feed in the user input so that would be from um, from the previous step there so that would be from the follow-up status step and we feed that in and it will calculate the appropriate um, number of days and then we use a regex step to extract the number of days and then we use this step here to calculate the appropriate date to actually um, follow up with and this is then relayed back to high level so this final step here will relay all of that information across the high level. So we relay the follow-up status, we relay the date, we relay the thread ID, um, and also the result, which is output from this step here. And that's pretty much the same, same kind of stages that we follow here. With the live chat, we also format and remove new lines, um, but that's literally how everything works on the back end um, with the make automation. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much everything that I've pretty much shared the entire um, kind of text-based agent system that, that we build. Um, there are obviously a lot of different configurations. So this is kind of one sort of flow that you can build out, um, but we can apply this to you know a different CRM, for example, if we're not using Go High Level, or we can choose a different automation tool, for example, NA10. Um, initially, we, we were using Zapier as the main tool to build this out for our clients. Um, but NA10 or make kind of the best tools. NA10 is, is definitely probably the best. Um, and then obviously you can use different kind of, um, you know, uh, LLMs to actually configure this system. Um, but majority of the time we use OpenAI. Um, but yeah, obviously there are different options out there. So yeah, that's pretty much our entire text-based um, AI agent system, which works across WhatsApp, SMS, Instagram, Facebook, um, also the live chat widget for, from Go High Level. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. Um, and again, if you want the free resources, all in the description below. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks, bye.